the hedonist, the, 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 you know, playing that role. In 1990, Tim Wilkes found himself living here in Winsboro. He was a freshman state representative and a man who seemed to have it all. But that soon changed after a visit from a set of federal agents. They said they were having this investigation and that, and that, that, that I was not the target, so to speak, mm -hmm. but they needed to see my books and records and stuff. At the time, Wilkes did not know, but other federal agents were visiting other state lawmakers. Wilkes says he was confused, especially after watching the story unfold on local television that night. They put this $100 bill up down the TV and had my picture, my picture right in the center of it, like I'm some kind of ring. Hell, I was a freshman legislator. I didn't know. You know, I was still wet, wet behind the ears. He and others also didn't know they had been recorded, taking money from then lobbyist Ron Cobb. Wilkes professes the money was a campaign contribution, but the feds claimed otherwise. Wilkes says prosecutors offered to make a deal in return for two things. You have to plead guilty and you have to lend us substantial assistance, which means set up your buddies, S seeing those people testifying against the friends was probably the thing that hurt me most of all. And so Wilkes refused. I told Bart Daniel I'd never ever plead guilty to something I didn't do. The Wilkes case caught the attention of author Ben Greer who wrote presumed guilty the Tim Wilkes story. I saw myself as trying to tell Tim's story. I didn't know if he was guilty or not. Tim Wilkes would have to take a trip down I-26 here to Charleston to find his defense attorney and he did a guy by the name of Gedney Howe. In Wilkes' book, he describes how, as a well-known attorney, almost like a who's who. Wilkes was a very visible, vocal member of the legislature, and he was uh, certainly a target of the government. Gedney Howe may look familiar to you. He and Bart Daniel most recently represented ex-speaker Bobby Harrell in his conviction of using campaign funds for personal use. From his law office in downtown Charleston, we sat down with Gedney Howe to talk about his role in defending Tim Wilkes. It was a, pretty much like David and Goliath. I mean, they, they, fighting the government's a big deal and a hard thing to do. Wilkes says Howe had a say in just about everything he did, even what he wore to court. Made him take out his blue contacts, took his old glasses, you know, he's a CPA, and I took and put some tape on the corner of the glasses like a nerd. But I didn't put it on the side of the face of the jury because they might think that was too obvious. Put it on the side away from the jury so they could sort of discover it, see? On September 24, 1991, Wilkes was found not guilty, becoming the only person indicted in lost trust to actually beat the charge. Needless to say, very much relieved and very happy. I just thank God that, that the jurors had the guidance to see that I was innocent. When the verdict was read and you told him to sit there and to take it all in. Because it doesn't get any better than this. Why did you tell him that? Because I thought it was, I thought it was pretty wonderful. Nobody expected us to win. State lawmakers would later pass the Ethics Reform Act, making it illegal for a lobbyist to even buy a legislator a cup of coffee. But some say things haven't changed. This state house, except for a few individuals, is completely corrupt. Wilkes went on to serve in the legislature until 2009. He now owns an antique shop in Winsboro, and he's working to get it ready for the public. He says to this day, he still thinks about lost trust. If I have a decision I have to make, and I'm, I'm looking at right and I'm looking at wrong, I look at it differently now than I did back then because I know there's accountability. Crandall Sims, ABC Columbia News.